Okay, so we are live. Um, so first of all, welcome everyone and uh, thanks for joining us today. Um, I would like to briefly introduce Elise, our uh, designer in resident. Um, Elise is a designer based in France and uh, this year's uh, designer, bench-based designer in resident 2020. Um, COVID turned all of our lives uh, upside down, uh, so also this residency program uh, had to be adjusted a little bit. Um, ideally, we'd like to bring our residents over to the workshop to Cork and uh, let them dive into the Irish culture and the working environment. Unfortunately, this um, wasn't possible right now, um, but we're still working on kind of a couple of different options with Elise, uh, who is uh, based in France at the moment, and uh, she's kind of working from her own um, workshop, I suppose. So one of the things Elise is working on is a project for um, for Benchspace, and maybe we will be able to show you some um, some updates on our social media channels um, on on the project, what, how this is developing. Um, another thing that we started is kind of um, a, an, an exchange, a dig digital exchange. Um, sorry, there's someone else trying to come in. <laughs> I just uh, try to keep uh, keep the introduction brief. Um, so if you're interested to touch base with Elise after this talk, you're more than welcome to um, share ideas or whatever, like you can always drop me uh, an email and we can uh, hook you up. Uh, my email address is lisa at benchfacecork.ie. Um, also at some point in the next year, um, in 2021, we would like to bring Elise over to Cork. This is obviously dependent on the government guidelines, but um, as part of the residency, she will give a class to, um, to Benchbase members um, on marketry. So this, uh, this is also very exciting. Um, one of the things we can do during uh, COVID uh, restrictions is an online talk, um, and that's what we're doing today. So that's all from me, and I'm going to hand over the microphone to Elise now, and you can start um, uh, your talk. Okay, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> well, hi, everybody. Um... I'm very pleased to, to tell you a brief introduction uh, of the in-story of French cabinet making. So um, I'll basically introduce the, the progresses of uh, the decorative uh, techniques uh, used in cabinet making that lead to new styles and a new aesthetic through the different centuries uh, in France. So um, this topic is extremely wide. Uh, and I'm um, talking for a computer, so uh, this is complicated for anybody to stay focused uh, more than one hour, so I deliberately choose not to speak about a lot of things. Um, I will not talk about some style uh, that I found personally less interesting, so uh, if you notice that there are um, some holes between the date uh, I'm giving, it is normal. Um, I will also not speak about what I would call um, the rustic styles, uh, because France is a vast land and a lot of local styles uh, appeared through the ages, so um, I won't speak about them because it would be too much. So do not hesitate to ask me uh, if you are interested uh, with answer. I will answer, sorry. So um, a second thing is uh, that the French cabinet making um, includes a rich vocabulary, so I could not find every translation, so sometimes I will use the, the French name or uh, translate it literally so without knowing if it's uh, the correct English word, so I'm, I'm sorry about that, but I guess somewhat uh, can be translated. So um, I will start uh, by defining uh, some word that, like uh, the word style. So, um, well, um, style describes a feature set of uh, ornaments, structures, materials, or uh, production methods uh, that characterize the taste and the colors, um, the vision of a certain time. Uh, if I have to define cabinet maker well in English, we understand that a cabinet maker um, was originally a craftsman, um, a joiner, uh, who was specialized in a specific piece of furniture, uh, which is cabinets. So um, at uh, its beginning in the 16th century, so the, the cabinet were, um, was merely a box that you could on a table uh, with two doors that you open um, on and small drawers. 
So it was used to store jewels or a collection of medals um, or a various uh, precious objects. Uh, but in the 17th century, uh, it took the shape of a dresser with uh, eye legs, with the same principle with a door or, or a flap. Um, and it became a formal piece of furniture, sometimes uh, richly decorated. So um, I guess this is why some joiner uh, become specialized in this field uh, in England, uh, well, in the English country. Um, in French, cabinet makers um, are called ebenist, um, which is a word I will use the, the most uh, in, during this talk. Uh, so um, this literally means the one who works with ebony. So it's kind of uh, ebonist. <laughs> um, so an ebonist uh, was a guy who recovered uh, furniture with marquetry uh, using exotic wood, uh, mainly ebony. But he was also using other materials such as tortoise shells, uh, mother of pearl, ivory, gold, silver, and, and so on. Uh, so, as a craft, uh, uh, it's called ebenisterie in French. So ebony is a type of food known in Europe since the, the 13th century. Uh, it comes from the East uh, and it was loved for its shiny black grains, uh, but it was Quite rare. Um, it was mainly used to make small, small boxes. So there were, was very little furniture made uh, in Ebony before the 16th century. But uh, with the discovery of the New World, you know, in uh, 1492 uh, by Christopher Columbus, um, came the age of explorations uh, and trades, and Ebony was more easily imported from Brazil to, to Portugal. Uh, so it was easier to find, and it even became the preferred type of food to make a new piece of furniture um, developed uh, at the end of the 16th century. So uh, you guess the cabinet. So we have come to Sartre. Um, the joiner at this time, as I said before, uh, was were not used to, to make a, a cabinet or make marquetry, uh, not used to, to work with ebony uh, because of its art green. So some joiners became specialized in the wall feed. And um, the cabinet making, so the ebony story, um, was born. So also the, the, the technique of veneering does exist in the antiquity. Uh, the craft of ebenisterie was popularized in the early 17th century. So this is why I've, I chose to start this topic at the, the uh, 17th century. Uh, you know. The 17th century is the first time uh, that we can dissociate French styles uh, of furniture to other styles in other countries. The first reason was um, that having furniture at home wasn't only reserved to kings and uh, aristocrats anymore. Before the 17th century, uh, you could only find furniture in churches, um, in castles, um, while the order had to, do, uh, had to deal with a, a board and castle. From the 17th century, the kings and the wealthiest merchants or nobles started to order furniture for their home, and uh, it settled a sense of passion uh, in furniture making. So I could quickly uh, uh, remind you uh, that the, the joinery techniques um, were already mastered uh, before the 17th century, so um, uh, because um, uh, you already had Don and Martis, uh, wood turning, veneering, um, uh, who were a master um, since antiquity. Uh, and in the Middle Age, um, Donor mastered the, the hostel, um, the meters, and um, the, the, the tongues and grooves. Uh, so uh, every, um, before 17th century, um, every technique, um, the donor techniques were um, mastered. So I won't talk about those techniques. So uh, I will start, um, and I will start, why it doesn't, yes, okay. Uh, do you see the mouse uh, moving? Yes.
I will start with Louis uh, uh, XIII, uh, who were um, uh, the king of France, who ruled over the kingdom um, from uh, 1610 to 1643. So, uh, he succeeded his father, um, Henri IV, who had been murdered in the streets of Paris uh, when Louis was only nine. So, um, um, he became king, and uh, during his reign, uh, crafts uh, were organized in cooperation. So, um, um, that strictly defined rules uh, for each craft. So there was uh, not any mix uh, between uh, the crafts. Uh, donor was uh, where with donor and um, cabinet maker was uh, where with cabinet makers. So the style um, Louis XIII uh, took place from 1600 uh, to, to 1660. So it's before and after uh, the, the, um, the King Louis XIII. So um, uh, this is some picture I've I've uh, put here uh, just to remember to remind you um, the time you know the the, the discoveries um, as the architecture architecture the art of the of this uh, period. Um, so I will uh, uh, speak about. Uh, each time uh, I will present to you, I think I will talk uh, about um, context uh, after I will uh, see some uh, techniques, technically, oops. Um, uh, and uh, I will show you some furniture after that, uh, talking about materials too. So, um, so as we, uh, uh, yes, as, oh, sorry. As I said before, uh, the joinery techniques uh, did not change in the, the 16th century. Uh, but this style had uh, two particularities, two, two novelties. So um, the first uh, was uh, the development of the technique of marketry, so here, uh, mixing different materials, different woods, um, and with middle um, ivory and so on. So it was um, mainly to, to manufacture and um, the cabinets that we were talking about. Um, and the other, um, the other novelty, uh, which isn't a, a novelty because uh, it, it, the, 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 turning, the wood turning um, existed in, uh, a long time before, but um, under the reign of Louis XIII, uh, it had been uh, developed to um, it leads to a massive use of turn, uh, wood legs, mainly turned in a twist shape, so as you can see here, uh, or in baluster shape. So um, it is the French name. I'm not sure of the English name for that. It is a French translation. So we call that a uh, twist leg and the uh, baluster leg here. Uh, so speaking of the um, materials, um, so the type of wood used at this time were oak and walnuts with a preference for walnuts because it's softer than oak so um, it's better for carving and turning. Uh, at this time uh, it is uh, the first time that uh, we have we had the seat um, with fabrics on it, so it was more comfortable. Uh, it was one of the first uh, seats um, make, made uh, this way. So uh, what you see here is a typical uh, type of fabric uh, from the um, uh, Louis XIII. Uh, uh, so there is ebony here, uh, so one that is here, um, oak and some, uh, after some mother of pearl uh, to speak about the, the market free materials. Uh, so uh, I will show you some furniture and I will uh, talk about the, the ornaments and, um, and the shapes that you can see on Louis XIII um, style. So um, if you see the third kind, 
this kind of of, um, of legs, it is Louis certain style. Um, uh, you know, wood turning everywhere. Uh, so um, for the, um, the patterns, so you add um, luxury and pattern from uh, the, um, the inspired by the antiquity and more spe specifically uh, by ancient Greece. So uh, all what you see here are ornaments, uh, patterns um, uh, that you that, that were used in the in antiquity uh, on sculpture. Room. So um, this is the first inspiration, and the other one is a strictly, um, I will show you here, a strictly a geometrical, sorry for this, uh, sometimes hard to pronounce. Uh, this one is called um, here, it's, it's diamond uh, shape pattern, or um, you have other one um, in a cross of Malta. Called Cross of Malta, so it's a uh, kind of a, of a cross. I haven't seen any picture of it, uh, unfortunately. But well, so this kind of uh, furniture is typical from the Louis Thirteen style. Uh, so you uh, find here again the the wood burning, um, and the, the 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 piece of furniture always adds at this time uh, what we what I call a cross piece, a strut. I think it is in English. So you know this part believe that it, it was the stronger this way. And if you see that it is um uh, often um uh, uh, some piece of wood here, the color spining, spinning, spining, yes. Um and it is also typical from the um, this, this style. So, um, and for it, uh, as I said, um, it was the uh, the first with fabrics. Well, you add a little bit uh, in the Renaissance period, but it was quite rare. So, um, it was popularized uh, on on uh, under the the reign of Louis XIII. Uh, that's. Um, so the, the piece of furniture that were um, crea created at this time was uh, mainly cabinets like this one um, to store precious objects, double chests like this one. So And uh, the the pair, but that um, there were uh, a lot of uh, there were uh, various panel of furniture at this time. So I will now uh, speak about Louis Sporting here for the context. So um, the word that described most this style, this, this style of uh, Louis Fourteen is a wow. As you will see uh, later with the furniture. So Louis Fourteen was born in uh, 1608 and he succeeded his father in, in uh, 1643 uh, at the age of five. And under the regency of his mother, Anne of Austria and Mazarin, Mazarin was the minister of uh, Louis XIII. So uh, the reign of um, Louis XIV was wealthy and powerful, um, and it was wealthy and powerful uh, for the French craft because he opened a huge royal uh, factory uh, gathering several crafts in one place uh, called Les Gobelins. I don't know if you know. Uh, this word. Um, he promoted the, the painter Charles Lebrun as a royal decorator and interest uh, him to create a spectacular uh, style in order to promote the French monarchy. The guy succeeded in doing that, that uh, um, to the point that the Kingdom of France was so financially ruined at the end of the 17th century, that the king had to melt all the sterling silver furniture uh, that uh, decorated Versailles at this time. 
um, uh, it was to, you know, to bail out the, the, the kingdom. So uh, it's a shame because um, there is no left of uh, such furniture nowadays. Um, so the, um, the Louis XIV style lasted from 72 years um, because uh, Louis XIV uh, lived uh, very old. So it's it from uh, 1643 to 1715, the, the date of the death of the Sun King. About the technicians, um, uh, there were no joinery technical advance advancement, uh, as we said before, um, but there, were, um, there was a huge decorative advancement. So first, the loose uh, fortune style is characterized by the appearance of uh, bronze elements here to decorate the, um, the furniture. Okay. And there's locks, corner badges. Um, so uh, it is also the, the development of the craft of bronze making. It also developed. Um, it it is also the development of silver. <laughs> Because almost every piece of furniture and the ring of Lucifer. The second, um, it is also characterized by a technique you know, of marketry called uh, bull marketry. So the principle of this technique is the superposition of finish that you cut the, the, the shape you want. Um, and it gives you two identical patterns, one being the negative to the other, so like this uh, picture. Um, so uh, it had been named after the King's Ebenist, André Charles Boulle, who did not create the technique, but uh, he mastered it at the highest level. Uh, regarding the material, so um, uh, the uh, the type of this again. Um, and walnuts for this purpose, but uh, the techniques right the wood um, improved because the uh, ebenist the cabinet maker could work on a structure that did not move through the edges, uh, which uh, is better because it doesn't fit. Um, and at the end of the 17th century, donors started to use this wood here uh, to make chairs because of its resistance and uh, its flexibility. So every still used a panel of materials uh, to make the marketry so exactly wood mixed with ivory, mother of pearl, photo shell. Here you can see um, missile with the preference for um, brass, which is copper. copper. Um, and the new material used to decorate the furniture is marble. So uh, top, the top of uh, the table or the test of the floor uh, were made in marble. So, um, as I said before, everything uh, in this style is wow. Uh, it is a superposition of patterns and ornaments, and it is uh, the, well, the too much period. So, these are ornaments uh, that you can find on uh, furniture at this period. So, um, the main inspiration it still came from the um, antiquity, but it was stylized uh, slightly differently from the, the Louis XIV style. So pattern you can uh, find are um, wires trophy, um, grid pattern, but um, um, combination of acanthus and shell. So uh, what you see here is um, acanthus leaf. Um, and um, so this type of pattern appear um, under the reign of Louis XIV, but uh, you will find on um, almost every style uh, this pattern, the acanthus and uh, the shell, you will see later. 
So uh, the typical shape of, um, of legs um, that you can find is um, here. So this one, uh, which is called in French, uh, console leg. Uh, so you find it uh, almost everywhere. Oh my God, sorry. There. Um, so um, regarding the, the furniture, uh, there had been a big diversification um, of uh, furniture. So cabinets and double chests became more and more uh, what I would call formal furniture. Um, it was more and more decorated. It was, um, you know, to show off. <laughs> um, as you can see here, look at this place. <laughs> um, uh, so, um, but uh, there were new uh, pieces of furniture such as a uh, minister of 13. Um, so, uh, it was a big, you know, of the style because um, uh, it was the residency of, of Mazarin. And he, he asked uh, a minister uh, a new type of uh, desk, this one, always the same shape, with seven. and uh, you have to go here, but this one has uh, two other drawers. Um, and you still have the cross piece, the, the spots, um, because there's still things thought that um, it was stronger this way. So uh, regarding the chair, uh, they reflect the need of comfort and uh, it became larger, the back is higher. And there is a slack, you know, a little angle um, to make it more comfortable. And some um, uh, armchair uh, have some headrest, you know, on the, on the side of the, the back of the chair, you could just put your head there. It was more comfortable, but I haven't, I haven't put the, uh, oh, sorry. Oh my God, uh, I have put uh, any picture of that. I didn't find a good one. So uh, what you can see it, uh, is um, a marker tree, you know, uh, with you, you find the, the same shape here in console, console uh, legs, um, uh, flowers and, and the typical um, pattern you could find on um, Louis uh, 14. There were uh, another style uh, called the Regency style, uh, but I won't speak about it because it, it is very like the, the Louis XV style. So I will uh, speak about Louis XV directly. Uh, so uh, Louis XIV died in 1715, as we said, and um, Louis succeeded his great grandfather, great grandfather, uh, at the age of five, uh, under the regency of Philippe of Orleans and um, no, Philippe and Orleans until uh, 1723. So everybody was very happy to learn the death uh, of um, Louis XIV because he left the kingdom without money and with too many war defeats. <clears throat> So uh, Louis XV ruled the kingdom at a very peaceful period, uh, which is good for finance. Uh, it is the beginning of Enlightenment age, I think, and tell it uh, uh, well. So in France, in French, it would be a siècle des Lumières. So this is a very good time for uh, philosophy, literature, and the elegance um, is preferred to, oh, sorry. Uh, to, um, so, uh, Louis XV style lasted uh, 51 years from 1720. Uh, it is called the golden age of the French furniture. So, I will talk about them. Um, Techniques. 
the style would be lightness because the donors aimed to lighten the, the furniture uh, structure. So the shape of furniture evolved with the, the disappearance of the squares you see here on this piece of uh, furniture, no cross piece anymore. And um, uh, they learned how to, to, to do curved um, piece of furniture. So this is a typical um, a typical uh, Louis XV uh, legs for furniture. Is it legs a good word? Yes. Um, so uh, the technique of veneering improved a lot because you needed to cut the wood uh, very thinly to press it on the curve shape with um, you press it with um, sand uh, bag. You know, put it on um, on the um, um, on the piece of wood, and uh, you put them. Um, um, well, you put the, plate, the, the veneer, and after the, the sandbag, um, this is also uh, the development of uh, chinoiserie, uh, which uh, in French describes the, the, the influence of China and Japan uh, on the French question. So you see here. Uh, it is a Chinese uh, uh, decor. Um, well, Ebenis tried to remake uh, the Chinese lacquer, uh, but it was uh, way too hard. And uh, it became very popular. So uh, sometimes they just, uh, uh, you know, uh, cut a screen that uh, already exists and put the, the part of the screen uh, in uh, the Chinese screen on the piece of furniture. So, uh, uh, so for the materials, uh, it is still the same materials um, to oak uh, here for strong structure, walnuts when it needs to be cut, feet for hair because it's, because it's flexible and uh, resistant. Uh, the same point uh, for um, the market materials, no innovations or still ebony, uh, uh, metal like a gold fiber, mother of all, and um, um, ivory, and so on. Um, colored marble continue to be used uh, on top of uh, furniture. Uh, I've got another one here, a, a white one, but uh, it was a um, mostly colored marble. So um, about the, the, the ornaments and shapes, so this period is the, the reign of the asymmetry. Uh, it is called the rocaille style, which uh, is similar to the rococo style. So um, the inspiration did not change. It is still antiquity. It's always antiquity. <laughs> um, that inspired the shape of ornaments. But uh, the French ebenist uh, cabinet maker deliberately or warp it, um, deforming it to the point that you could not recognize the pattern. Um, so here you can see uh, it is a shell. It doesn't look like a shell, but it is uh, a shell. Um, the, the, the main shape uh, of the Louis XV uh, style is an um, asymmetrical curve, uh, like this one. You, you see it's not symmetric. And um, the curve on a piece of furniture. If you see that kind of curve on a piece of furniture, it is a uh, Louis XV style. Uh, so uh, a business uh, put uh, this shape everywhere. So there is a big diversification uh, of the use of furniture. Um, what I mean is um, that you add several uh, type of desk and uh, several type of uh, of drawers. Uh, so, for example, uh, uh, there were um, three different types of desks. So you had a, a flat desk. I don't know if I have a picture or not because I didn't have five. So you have the, one of the shape of this. Um, flat desk, uh, which uh, were, were, was very functional, very comfortable, so it was a, a table. The cylinder desk, this one, uh, which is a mix between a, a, our all good uh, cabinet and a desk. You could store secret paper um, in it. So you see, you can, um, oh, sometimes, oh, uh, yes, here, you have a lock to, to lock the, the whole thing. And you add, um, uh, I haven't put uh, this, is not, what a shame. <laughs> um, 
Uh, I didn't have any uh, picture. Uh, you had a little uh, desk called the Bonheur du Jour, which uh, literally means uh, the joy of the day. Desk, um, which was for, um, it was a little uh, writing desk for ladies. Um, other, um, other example, uh, Uh, for women sit with a huge dress, so, uh, a really huge dress um, with I don't know the word in English. Very large for them to, to sit. And you had um, some other uh, chair, uh, like uh, I didn't find a good uh, picture of it, but um, uh, like the voyeur chair. Uh, so the voyeur chair was the chair where, where you sit, uh, so to take part, for example, for example. And your friend could um, uh, so uh, you had some fabric in in the top of the chair. Um, could lend his elbow on the back of the chair and uh, look at uh, your game. Uh, this is why uh, it is called the wire, the wire, yes, chair. So I cannot show uh, you all the furniture that were created at this time, but, uh, but Ebenis had a lot of imagination uh, to create new furniture with new functionality. Um, also, the mechanical furniture, uh, uh, often made with, uh, um, in partnership with a clockmaker, um, it was very fashionable. Um, okay, so um, I will forget one uh, once more to talk about a, a style called transition. Blah, blah, blah. Transition style. Transition. Okay, transition style. Um, which last uh, which last um, 25 years? It was during the, the Louis uh, 15 period. Uh, it was from uh, 70, 75 to 1770. But to sum up, it looked like the the the, look, the Louis uh, 15 style. Uh, but uh, with the end of the the ornament. Uh, it was the same, but in a symmetrical way. So Louis uh, uh, 16, uh, why, um, why, have, uh, why I have put Marie Antoinette? Uh, it is because um, it is said, no, it is known um, that it did not pay any uh, attention to, to art and craft. And it was Marie Antoinette, um, Queen of France, uh, who had a, a, a huge influence uh, on art and craft at this time because um, she was the one who ordered uh, several furniture for furniture um, from Ebony. Um, it is also a time of changes. Uh, remember that it is uh, the Enlightenment age, uh, so there were changes or innovation in every field. Uh, which influenced the shape of the, the, the new ornament. Uh, for example, um, sorry, I forgot to put you the context. For example, um, and it is a pattern that you could find on the back of chair. I will show you one uh, um, later. Um, uh, you also had the, the great expedition of La Pérouse, uh, which were uh, which was who was sorry who was uh, um, a famous explorator, a French explorator. Um, so it, uh, the uh, La Pérouse bring um, new patterns to uh, draw uh, instead of Chinese or Japanese one. Um, there were new patterns, and there were also the War of Indep Independence in uh, America. Um, that also uh, impressed the, the craft. Uh, it gave Ebenist um, new patterns like um, Amerindian, um, you know, Indian uh, uh, pattern. Uh, for the techniques, 
Um, there were not many novelties in, uh, in this style, um, except that ebenists sometimes uh, include slabs of porcelain uh, from the factory of um, Sèvres, um, which is convenient for experts uh, to date the piece of furniture because uh, it was Uh, you see on the piece of furniture, you had a slab of, of porcelain. Um, about the materials, um, in addition to traditional wood, uh, French Ebenez had um, at their disposal a brand new type of wood, uh, which is mahogany. Uh, it is imported from Saint Domingue uh, and uh, it used. Um, as solid wood to make furniture or as near in marketry. Um, also, in this style, um, they didn't use colored uh, marble, uh, so they start to use uh, only white uh, or uh, blue uh, marble, which is a uh, gray marble, so white or gray, but uh, not uh, red or, or green anymore. Uh, okay. Um, uh, about the shapes and the ornaments. Um, so the shape of furniture become lighter and the curve left room for straight lines and refined lines. Uh, it was very um, feminine uh, style. So uh, there were less bronzes. Oh, well, okay, it's not a good example here. <laughs> but there were less bronzes. And um, it was a geometrical veneer um, uh, that were preferred for market rate. So no more um, flowers, no more, um, uh, I don't know what, <laughs> but uh, it was uh, only geometrical, not only, but it was uh, mainly geometrical. The uh, Chinese leather is still fashionable, um, but sometimes it is Amerindian pattern uh, that are preferred to paint one. But I haven't found uh, um, a piece of furniture to show you with the Amerindian patterns. Um, so, um, okay, so, oh my god, okay. <laughs> Uh, so, um, little furniture with specific use uh, were still made by Ebenist, like, um, like uh, under the, the Louis XV style. Uh, the new piece of furniture um, is um, the dining table round. Well, uh, I missed the slide. I'm sorry, I haven't uh, forgot the slide. It was at the dining table, so it's a round shape, um, and it was fitted on the uh, caster wheels, and uh, it has extension sleeves, so it was very um, functional. Uh, so a lot of uh, furniture was was um, uh, fitted on uh, on wheels at this time. Uh, so you still have the same shape of um, of furniture, um, so the, the, the same type of furniture. Um, so the, the cylinder desk. I've, I've put this one because uh, um, you saw the difference between uh, the Louis uh, 15, uh, the Louis 16, and the, the Louis uh, here 15. Uh, about the chair. So uh, as I told you, um, uh, so this is a, the hot air balloon that inspired this one. Uh, so uh, this kind of chair are um, inspired by uh, you know an open work uh, pattern. Um, so you have the here or the, the hot air balloon, and uh, for the French style, in fact, uh, it was a medallion uh, chair um, that were preferred. So you have you have uh, a lot of uh, uh, chairs that have this shape. Um, okay, so um, I will miss a little. <laughs> so uh, there is some style between um, Louis uh, XVI and uh, the Empire style. 
But as you may know, the, 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 um, the end of the 18th century is not a peaceful period um, in France. Since in 1789, uh, the French Revolution began. So at the end of the century, uh, being tempestuous, and because it was dangerous uh, for them to, to support every ornament related to monarchy. So no flowers, no lilies, no crown, and so on. So there were a break in the art and craft. Um, so uh, I won't speak uh, about this period because uh, French people uh, well, as I was thinking about um, other things that are out of art. Um, but um, because of the revolution, all uh, corporations uh, that I was uh, speaking about, you know, um, um, the corporation that um, began uh, under the reign of uh, Louis XIII, uh, all corporations disappeared, uh, which, gave, which gave some freedom to um, ebenists develop as they wished. So um, workshops became companies and um, and mixing the crafts, you know, uh, hiring workers. So um, you had builder with a cabinet maker, with owner, uh, everything could be possible before. It wasn't allowed by the king. Uh, so um, there was an, uh, a new organization of work and all the society changed, all the places uh, were uh, inverted. Uh, so to get inspired, Ebenist uh, looked into the, the expedition of the General, uh, General Napoleon Bonaparte, uh, who went to Egypt to block access to the India Road, uh, which was the English trade road here. Yeah. Um, uh, but he brought uh, artists and servants with him who came back with new patterns, new inspiration. So uh, I will directly uh, jump to the 19th century um, and the beginning of the French Empire and the reign of Napoleon Bonaparte, um, uh, marking the beginning of the empire style, uh, which is broadly inspired by this, uh, his expedition to Egypt. Uh, Napoleon said, uh, what is great is beautiful, and I am particularly seeking greatness, end quote. So um, I guess this is what he tried to pass throughout the, uh, the empire style. The empire style last 11 years. Uh, it, it, it was a short one. Uh, from 1804, uh, with the emperor coronation, and uh, to 1815, they were um, he left for the Belilin Island. Uh, it was shortly after the return of uh, monarchy uh, with uh, Louis XVIII. Uh, but I won't speak about uh, Louis XVIII, or I won't speak about uh, the return of monarchy. I will only speak about the um, empire style. So uh, the techniques. Yes, I'm sorry for that. I didn't find any picture of, um, of the mechanical saw, but uh, the first mechanical saw appeared in uh, 1798. So workshop uh, had, um, had this kind of, of saw now. Uh, so it was the first signs of um, indus industrialization. So the techniques did not evolve uh, that much. Uh, it was more a question of uh, organization within the workshop. Uh, so uh, about the materials, um, it's, it is lighter than um, in uh, the Louis uh, uh, 15, 15 style. So as uh, a star of, um, of this Every piece of culture are uh, in Maogani. Um, but unfortunately for Ebenis, uh, there was a continental blockade in 1806. So Maogani was not imported anymore and, and they, made, uh, uh, they made do with fish, with shea wood, uh, with uh, elm, uh, with pear wood. 
um, that are easily stained to look like mahogany. So uh, in, the, uh, in this style, it, it is only mahogany and uh, um, and fabrics too. Yes, here. So it was a written a written to um, the antiquity inspire inspiration, but this time it was about Roman and uh, Egyptian. Civilization. So um, Napoleon wants to use the Roman Empire uh, Empire patterns to suggest the greatness. Uh, it was a uh, constantly seeking witness. So, uh, so um, all uh, there are some symbols were used, like the the laurel from the the eagle, uh, the lion, um, and also the the Egyptian patterns like the the sphinx. Or as the Beatles. Speaking of insects, um, the symbol of the Emperor Napoleon was the bee. Uh, I, I think I have uh, yes here. So it, this species of furniture is uh, is thrown. It's thrown. Thrown. Yes. Um, so you can find uh, the bee pattern everywhere, uh, carved in the wood uh, or um, uh, uh, on board. <laughs> This is a difficult, uh, <laughs> difficult uh, word for me. Embroidered, uh, embroidery is it? We did uh, resay it. Um, well, I, I want to. I want to succeed in uh, <laughs> embroidery. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, so, um, so uh, as you see, it was everywhere. And the empress, uh, Josephine, also had a symbol, uh, but it was not an insect, uh, it was a, the swan that you could find carved on furniture or um, as uh, armrests, you know, for example. Um, here you see the, the head of a swan. Um, and uh, the piece of furniture, uh, the most important at this time was the bed. Um, I don't know why <laughs> it become a formal pieces of furniture. So, uh, everyone, uh, if you want to show you, you your power, you have to have um, a big bed. So this a big bed. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Maybe they were doing parties in uh, in the bedroom. Um, uh, so uh, you also have um, this kind of of a mirror called the Psyche in, uh, in, uh, in French. And I think it is cheval glass in English. Um, I'm not sure about the, 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 the word for here. Uh, console table. Um, uh, so you had also a lot of uh, that kind of furniture. I forget the name. I can't, I can't put a, a name the thing. Um, in French, it is guéridon. I'm not sure of the, the English word. I just, it's a word. Uh, well, <laughs> um, so as you can see, it was very simple. Uh, only mahogany and uh, a pair of bronze and that all. But it was, you know, a greatness of uh, Napoleon. Uh, you, you find the, the spawn here again uh, of Josephine. And uh, the Egyptian uh, patterns here. Uh, so um, the return, the re return, sorry, <laughs> the return of monarchy uh, was not an extraordinary period for craft, um, mainly because kings uh, would follow one another were not interested in craft. Uh, so it did not. about the short period um, uh, in between Napoleon uh, Bonaparte and uh, Napoleon III. So um, uh, I will uh, that bring us directly to the Second Empire after the First Empire um, and the reign of Napoleon III um, after his coup. His coup where in was in uh, 1852, I guess. Uh, yes. Uh, 
Um, so it put an end to the austerity um, that characterized uh, the craft um, at this time. So, you know, empire was very simple. Um, so uh, it brought back life to, to the court. Uh, so there were many sumptuous um, celebrations. And the Empress uh, Eugenie uh, was passionate uh, about the art and craft, uh, but in an um, old fashioned way. Um, sorry, I forgot the context. Um, so um, um, there weren't uh, many innovations uh, at the time because there weren't uh, an innovative, uh, innovative uh, spirit. Uh, so what happens is that ebenists were asked to make furniture with ornament from the historic work record of uh, the previous styles. Uh, so it gave a big, big mix between all the patterns uh, that we were talking about sooner. Um, um, it is a return to a return to ostentation to to bump. Um, uh, the technist, um, so uh, this was of course the industrial uh, revolution, so all the machines uh, worked mechanically. Uh, Ebenix could make more furniture, it was cheaper, so uh, it was more available for people, even those who weren't uh, the most uh, wealthiest. I think almost all of us, uh, I guess, French uh, uh, have a piece of furniture uh, from this period at uh, their granny's home or <laughs> grandfather homes. Um, it spread the style um, through, through, through France. Uh, for the innovation, um, so what you see here is called papier mâché. Um, and uh, in uh, the, the Napoleon III style, you find some uh, piece of furniture uh, made with paper, so with papier mache. Um, you can recognize uh, them by the black color and the painting uh, on it. So this is a little uh, object, but uh, you also add a um, um, little bedside table, um, a little cabinet, a little uh, chair, a lot of chair. So, um, yes, this is for the innovation. For the material, uh, well, it's not complicated. Uh, every material has been used at its time. Every type of food with uh, a preference for ebony. Uh, every marble, um, uh, marble of, or stones uh, of all color, fabrics uh, like the velvet, the tapestry, trimmings, um, uh, of course, very precious materials such as ivory, mother of pearl, uh, silver, Japanese and Chinese lacquer, uh, porcelain, gilded uh, or silver bronze, well, everything. So uh, there is a small innovation. Yes, I was talking about that. Okay, uh, I forgot. So, uh, the papier mache. I forgot that I just told you. Um, uh, so, um, as I said before, for the shape, uh, it is an accumulation. Oh, uh, this is the um, this table. Um, uh, this round uh, shape. Uh, it comes from the dining table, uh, the Louis XVI dining table. Uh, I forgot to put a slide about the table, but uh, this, this is this where this was them. Um, oh my God! It had this shape without the spine lens. Um, uh, so um, it is a mix between all the shape uh, from uh, the past. Um, the Napoleon III style is defined by this accum accumulation of, um, of shape, this anarchy of, of shape. Um, so there was uh, such an abundance of uh, furniture of all uh, shapes. So I will simply show you some. Um, uh, so uh, you, I were talking about, I was talking about the chair in papier mâché. So this is one. Um, uh, you add 
a secretary here, a dining table. Um, ooh, uh, this is a console table, um, richly decorated. So it is a uh, marquetry, uh, porcelain, porcelain from uh, Sevres. The Louis XV style shape here. Um, here you have the Louis XVI shape, this kind of um, of uh, chest of drawers. In, in under Louis XVI, it was uh, a chest of drawers, but um, and this one is a mix between a lot of stuff. <laughs> so you still have the bull marquetry and the bronzes and ebony. Yeah. Uh, and the chair. Um, so there were an abundance of uh, chair too. So this, this is um, uh, this kind of chair uh, was very um, fashionable in the in the um, I won't say poor, but in the, um, you know people like us, we did not have a, a lot of money. Um, this is the kind of chair we can uh, afford. Maybe not so painting like that, but um, that was the kind of chair uh, that were industry, uh, um, you know, made in industry. So that's this one. This one, I think it's still uh, papier mache. And you find again the, the Louis uh, 15 shape. It's all a mix about uh, the English style uh, with open work and, uh, and the Louis uh, 15. And um, that brings us to the last style uh, I will talk about, um, Art Nouveau, which is uh, one of my favorite. Um, so it's not Art Nouveau, it's also modern style, because Art Nouveau is, um, is um, around 1900 to 1910. But um, I choose to speak about the, the world uh, style. Uh, so it started at, um, in 1888. Uh, so uh, this is one of my favorite <laughs> styles. Uh, it is also called the total art uh, period because the same li line um, are, are found in every art, you know, as you are making art. Uh, regarding ebenisterie, so um, cabinet making, uh, it was led by uh, Nancy School. Um, so Nancy is a city in France. In the uh, who was a glassmaker, a ceramist, and an ebenist. Uh, in collaboration with Louis Majorel, who was um, architect and ebenist. Um, Eugène Vallon, architect and ebenist, and the Dom um, Borzer, uh, who were crystal makers. So uh, the four of them wanted to amend the difference uh, that was done between uh, what was called the major arts and the minor arts to understand uh, the difference between arts and crafts. Uh, craft uh, were considered as the minor art, so that's not cool. <laughs> um, so they want to they wanted a, a, a close collaboration between arts, uh, science, and industry. So it is uh, the first sign of um, of the birth of the design as we know it. So uh, about the techniques, um, nothing to be said here because, uh, as I said before, um, it was a rush of industrialization. So um, a workshop became company. Um, it was a huge place with a lot of machines. Um, look like uh, this place. Um, the materials. So uh, it is a big region of the indigenous wood. Uh, uh, which was still fashionable, uh, but ebenists mainly use oak. Uh, walnut, fish, cherry, and plant tree. Uh, they were still uh, using few bronzes, but with uh, very, uh, yes, it was with economy. Um, so, about the ornament and shape, um, craftsmen wanted to break uh, with the past. So, in total opposition with the Napoleon street style, uh, 
they created new lines, uh, new shapes, inspired by um, nature, woman, and woman, you know. So uh, it is a very curved style and very feminine style. Uh, so there is no new furniture, no new functionality. Uh, maybe the next uh, table as Emil Gamay, Gale love uh, to make, so it is a table that you can uh, store uh, uh, one uh, under the other, you know. Uh, so what you see on the screen is pre um, majorelle work. Uh, so uh, this is some, um, um, a dresser. So you see here, it's always nature, all the nature shape, and um, and the woman. Um, well, uh, it would like to know all the styles, so this is why I, I love this style. So um, everything is in uh, in solid wood, uh, but you have a few uh, marquetry that are done. Um, Emil Daly was uh, very... Um, um, it was very, um, he, he liked, um, he liked uh, market trailer to Emil Gale had some market tree. Uh, so this is Gale, Gale, um, who were a glassmaker. So this is why I put a, a little uh, face. Um, so this is his work. So you see the shape of the, um, of the, of the legs are totally different. Um, it is, uh, I don't remember the name of this thing, sorry. <laughs> so uh, Gale was very strong in marketry, so all the piece of furniture he made uh, had market permits. Um, yeah. And uh, this is Hector Guimard, and I'm sure you know him uh, because um, this is a guy who made uh, the middle um, entrance of the um, metropolitan, the Parisian uh, metropolitan. So I, I don't know if you have um, had ever been in Paris, but in Paris you have a um, uh, metallic um, entrance for, for um, metropolitan. And it was an ebonist too, uh, so uh, this is uh, the, um, his work. Um, was still with nature, still with uh, uh, curved lines. And uh, yes, well, I think I finished and I forget the slide uh, to say thank you for listening. <laughs> and uh, if she had question, I would be glad to answer. I Thank hope you, you understand everything. <laughs> Thanks very much, Elise. This was very, very insightful. Um, uh, fascinating how the furniture evolved and developed. Um, so yeah, so back to, to everyone else, I suppose, if you want to unmute yourself, if you have any questions, um, let's see if we can manage them verbally. So if anyone has a question, maybe just go ahead and ask it. You might have to unmute yourself. Um, I've, I've got one question, Lisa, um, for uh, Elise. Um, Elise, do, do, do you feel a connection to this history of, of, of um, Ebenists? Is that something that feels alive now today? Um, Yes, but I won't say it for other mega. Um, in France, it's a little bit uh, about minimalism, and uh, you know, and tradition is not um, something that we add in in, uh, in our uh, DNA, uh, I guess. So it's always, I guess, it is the way French are, uh, you know, are. But um, personally, I feel very connected to, to uh, the style. Um, I, um, I love. Um, uh, to see all the all this piece of furniture, I uh, found it uh, well. Uh, wow, <laughs> um, it is very elegant. It is very French. So I'm I don't know. I'm, I'm in my work. I, I guess sometimes um, uh, it is visible, and I've been um, um, I've learned ebenistry uh, uh, in. Um, in a traditional um, even history, uh, and uh, it was uh, so. I only walk on on solid wo wo wood, uh, making uh, this kind of um, of shape. So um, uh, this even history was making old furniture, and um, 
instead of uh, finishing it uh, in uh, old ways, they were putting a very um, a color. It was very colorful. So they put some, I don't know, uh, um, a rose or um, leopard um, uh, pattern or, you know, on it. So it was very interesting to work with them. So this is why I'm, I'm, I, I feel, I personally feel connected. But in my um, with uh, my colleague, I don't uh, feel that um, everybody is connected to this. It is much the, the design. So it is most after Art Nouveau, um, Art Deco maybe, um, and uh, Walter Gropius with the Bauhaus and and everything. It is yeah, it is more fashionable in print. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? I was just want, I don't know whether you can hear me or not, Lee. Uh, yes, Chris, yes. Um, the layers of varnish that go on over the marquetry, how many layers do you have to put it on to get the film, the high gloss on it? Um, it was called, uh, in France, I uh, don't have the, the English uh, word for that, but it's called um, tampon. Uh, varnish, uh, so tampon. So you use a piece of um, of uh, fabrics, um, and you put varnish on it, and you have to to turn, turn, turn. And it's a very long. So I don't know. There's a reason. Any question of um, of flares? Uh, okay. It is a question of the time you are spending. Uh, uh, you know, um, uh, spreading the, the varnish on the on the marquetry. It is very long. And it is okay. very rare now that I'm not uh, able to do that. It is uh, an ancient um, knowledge that is a period. Through. And, but it was very long. Um, I think one piece of furniture, like a desk, uh, it could take 10 hours uh, spending to, to vanish okay. it. In, in, one, in one particular piece there, which is like the chest of drawers, there was a fierce Japanese influence in one piece. Um, sorry, I, I don't get everything. Um, I know this is all French uh, furniture, but in one particular piece, there was fierce, strong influence of uh, Japanese. Japanese yeah. furniture. Um, we, Lisa, can you? Uh, I think you have. Uh, well, it's because I'm. Uh, I, yeah. I'm so a, I think I think Chris, Chris you you mentioned uh, a Jap So did the French cabinet making? Um, Influenced the Japanese uh, furniture, yeah. I kind of, um, or vice versa, yeah. Yes, I guess uh, so. Uh, because um, French and Japan, um, it is a big history about um, uh, cabinet making, and um, I guess yes. Uh, well, nowadays it is true. Nowadays it it is true that uh, Japan uh, influenced a uh, French designer. And right. the French designer influenced uh, Japan one. So, but I can't say um, at this time. I'm not sure, you know, because um, uh, the French, the way that the European were working, uh, it was, um, you know, we went uh, for campaign and, uh, and invasion, <laughs> a little bit okay. of invasion, and uh, we come back with all uh, this new pattern, but. Um, Japanese or Egyptian didn't come French. Okay. I'm not sure there is a mix of knowledge. Um, I'm, I'm, I think it is uh, more nowadays that the Japan uh, are uh, influenced by French and 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 in other uh, and um, French are in, influenced by Japan. Okay, thank you. You're right, actually, Chris, you know, um, um, the Japanese uh, kind of marquetry is very similar to um, some of the pieces that you have shown there, Elise, you know, so um, that didn't cross my yes. mind before, but uh, yes. I can see it now. Um, yeah. even, I, even, I, I, even, one of the pieces, even one of the pieces on the three, three items, the bed, the chair and the, the back piece is very influenced by yeah. um, samurai type of architecture background. Mm -hmm. Yes, sorry, yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, it's just it's just the way I'm looking at them. Mm. Yeah, fascinating. <laughs> yes, yes. Thank you. Okay. Any Thank other you. questions? 
<laughs> no, that's enough. <laughs> She's probably tired, tired at this stage. No, no, no problem. I'm, um, yeah. I love answering the question. I think it's more interesting for me to speak with you than uh, speaking alone. <laughs> Yeah, what, what we might be able to do is, um, um, because this was very, um, you know, like you, you've been talking and it hasn't been very interactive, I suppose, what we can look into if people are interested, uh, we can have something like a more interactive session at some point, maybe not today, where we can talk about yes. different uh, influences or whatever, like, you know, we can look into that. Um, so if there are no further questions from anyone, I'm just trying to check. Uh, it's kind of funny, this medium, so I can't really see everyone at the same time. So I'm just let, let me troll screw if I can see anyone else. Um, if anyone else has a question. I don't think there is another question. So if that's the case, if there are no further questions, then I would like to thank Elise. Thank you very much for this uh, very insightful talk. <laughs> <laughs> um, if anyone Brilliant. would like to connect with Elise, um, you can either, either drop me an email, which is lisa at benchbasecork.ie, uh, or Elise directly, what's your contact detail, um, what's your email address, or... Um, Elise Rousselot, well, um, Elise Rousselot design uh, um, at uh, gmail.com uh, but uh, careful the, the my name wasn't correctly uh, uh, writing uh, on on the Facebook yeah and, apologies about so, that so it's yeah, no problem. it's double s and only one l yes. I think we mixed that up yes. on all our social media <laughs> so um so just um, <laughs> mind the writing the good way uh, if you want to, to, to all right yeah thanks very much everyone and thanks elise and um uh, enjoy your weekend thank you thank you, thank you. Bye. Bye. bye bye